Welcome everybody to another episode of DWP Digital's podcast. My name is Stuart and today we're talking about our Jura to SAS migration project and the processes we used in order to carry out a seamless transition across our live services and our 5,000 strong user group. And as always, hit the subscribe button now to make sure you don't miss an episode. So let's get started. Sean, Ramona, Paul and Linda, would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, I'm Sean Luke. I'm a transformation consultant. I've been with the department now for about getting on for three years. And um, I've been I've actually started working in the DWP back in about 1986. Uh, so I was a civil servant for, I don't know, uh, 13 years, something like that. And then I, I moved on to private sector and then into the supply chain and then ended up um, back at the department with a ser service provider and then uh, made the leap uh, into consulting. Hi everyone, my name is Ramona Skripkaru and I'm a cloud migration manager at Atlassian. My role at Atlassian is to offer strategic end-to-end -end guidance to our enterprise customers navigating their cloud journey for a successful transformation. I have a bit of an interesting background because I finished both the law school and engineering, but I also loved the IT and the life ended up uh, bringing me in Amsterdam and working for Atlassian. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Paul Fern. Uh, I'm a solution architect in uh, in the department and uh, I've been with DWP now for some 18 months, uh, delivering various projects. Uh, my key responsibilities are um, ownership of the technical solution, uh, taking that solution through governance and really supporting the delivery right through from requirements through to implementation and into support. Hi, I'm Linda Anderson. I've been in the civil service for 30 years. Prior to that, I was in the armed forces. I worked mostly in operations uh, for the last 25 years and re more recently asked to help out as a subject matter expert in digital and evolved into an, uh, a business analyst where I've worked on several projects, including access to work, uh, customer computers, and more recently, the Jira migration. So can you tell me about your teams and the parts they played within this project? As I understand, it's not your typical DWP digital project. Uh, yeah, the the, um, the the team that we put together for this was was drawn from 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 other parts of uh, from of hybrid cloud services. So so we have we have some some pretty talented people in in HCS um, from you know things from things like architecture right right through to uh, quite low level engineering uh, and we also have uh, product specialisms as well so we have product managers business analysts um, and uh, you know product owners so uh, so we had to we had to build a team um, you know reasonably reasonably quickly uh, for for this requirement because we really wanted to to test that um, that migration to SaaS um, experience we wanted to, to get a handle on how we would cope with that as an organization and how we deal with it and and really wanted to build up some good practice because we, we know that the trend for uh, for for uptake of SaaS is, is increasing. So so more and more services are becoming available via via SaaS platforms. It's certainly a trend in the in the software industry. So we, we just wanted to get a handle on that. So we needed we needed to pull in someone who who could get a great a handle on um, on business analysis on on communications with the user community. We needed very strong um, architecture. Um, expertise. Uh, we needed good experience of using the platform and we needed some um, uh, systems engineering uh, and product engineering expertise as well. So that was that was the team that we wanted to put together and we also wanted to uh, to experiment with some ways of working as well um, to see um, if we could push the agile ways of working a little bit further on as well and, and maybe learn from that. Just to uh, add a little bit uh, further to uh, what Sean was saying about the team, um, we we built a, a team uh, with with many sort of skills and capabilities, and and a couple of a couple of the ones that that also spring to mind uh, uh, is certainly the testing side, um, because you know we felt we identified early on that you know testing was going to be a, a very critical part of the project. Uh, and we reached out to the 
department's testing team to uh, to engage with with them and, and make sure that they were on board with the project and and became part of the wider uh, project team uh, so that was that was really good and uh, in addition the project was also transitioning the support of the service uh, to a different uh, uh, team in the department um, so again the, the the new support team needed to be formed there and that was a very critical piece of work that we did uh, to get uh, that team formed early and to engage with them throughout the project um, and they're, they're just two examples really of um, uh, so some some other things that we were doing in, in addition to the you know business uh, analysis and the architecture and and, and engineering work that uh, that was also critical so so my my part in in the process was providing traditional ba uh, business analysis uh, help regarding communications liaising with the end users, understanding what their needs were and, and filling gaps in their knowledge on on the JIRA, JIRA project and understanding what they needed to, when, when we transitioned over to the cloud. So uh, 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 much of the time was spent um, creating new guidance posting the guidance and publishing it for the for the end users to to use and it was critical on the day that we went live that we had access to to the information that they were going to need to help them comfortably land on on day one but the guidance that we put in place was was really useful for them and they they really engaged with that guidance and and made that that transition really swiftly Part of our role is to ensure that our customers have all the resources to plan, analyze, and execute a successful migration to cloud. We also advocate internally for our customer use case within our product management team, and we feed insights back to the business. We also share learnings from our large customer base and subject matter experts from those who have done a migration before. And lastly, we connect our customers with the wider Atlassian family to ensure that they have the best help possible for their success project. I think it is important to highlight that for most of our customers, migrations are one thing that happen one in a lifetime that they will just do once and that's all. But our team is working specifically with customers that are looking to migrate to the cloud. So we have a lot of experience in working with a lot of our enterprise customers. And we like to say that we are not a dedicated resource for the individual projects from the customer. We do recommend for them to have a dedicated project manager and the resources uh, technical in place. But we offer that additional expertise, best practices and alignment from the experience that we gather there. So well, we are not providing any hands-on support for this type of projects. We can't do the migrations for our customers. That's why the customer is the main accountable for the migration. But we are that contributor that adds additional uh, best practices in place. To help set the scene, can you provide me with some background into DWP Digital's use of Jura across its services? So. DWP Digital, the, the IT department uh, in uh, DWP, has been using JIRA now for well well over five years, I would say, uh, in some guise or another. Um, and uh, in fact, has gone through you know upgrades and migrations before, but but not not uh, not to the cloud uh, SaaS service. Um, so this was the first time for for DWP and. In terms of its usage across the department, um, it's quite widespread. We, we've got an agile delivery approach to uh, our project work. So we've got, you know, um, over sort of circa uh, 2000 people there um, that are using JIRA in a sort of uh, classic Kanban or uh, agile sprint type uh, way of controlling uh, managing um, their works uh, in terms of tasks and uh, and and that that comes with all the classic you know use of epics and stories and uh, and, and 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 tasks uh, behind it so that's a really key uh, use case within DWP 
Uh, and in addition to that, we've got lots of other users as well um, across the, uh, the the department um, that are not particularly involved in those day to day project activities, but are involved in you know key delivery aspects. Um, particularly, you know, examples might be service transition, where we we have a team that supports the transition of that service through into uh, production. Um, and they also use JIRA and many of its capabilities to, to help them track that work through to completion. Um, so quite a diverse really use of JIRA in the department and, you know, circa four and a half thousand users typically um, and um, um, many different roles in, in terms of, you know, structuring, uh, access control uh, to these uh, projects and uh, Confluence spaces that we have. Uh, so very typically, we we have you know project leads that, are, that do a lot of the administration and uh, and a team that supports uh, administration requests so that they can they can be serviced. Um, so very very key tool really within the DWP digital business for for delivering IT um, and um, you know using other tools as well. Um, uh, such as you know continuous integration continuous development and and also collaboration tools as well so jira fits very nicely into the tooling set that uh, ddp digital uses um and it's also got some real great capabilities in terms of its integration with confluence as a as a sort of you know collaboration uh, wiki type tool that can really help you move forward with uh, uh, with your tasks very quickly, you know, in terms of brainstorming and uh, and and uh, you know, doing things like meeting minutes and uh, and and things like that. And in fact, um, it's no surprise that we use Jira. Uh, well, certainly we use Confluence um, in the migration project to help the delivery of this uh, the migration project as well. Um, so yeah, really key tool for DWP Digital and uh, moving to cloud was really. Uh, put in a uh, great foundation in place for DWP moving forward now uh, with uh, with the challenges that uh, uh, typical project delivery brings. So why is the migration from Jura to SaaS so important for us? And what benefits will it bring to DWP Digital and its users? So there were quite a few different uh, reasons for doing this migration. Um, firstly, um, we were supporting a, um, an existing JIRA Confluence service that uh, we, we were managing the infrastructure for, and, and we certainly wanted to get the benefits of moving to a cloud SaaS solution so that Atlassian did all that sort of management for us, and that would free up our resources. Um, uh, but more importantly, perhaps is is you know being able to take advantage of the new features that cloud brings us, and uh, you know Atlassian are continually developing their products all the time, um, so we don't have the headache of being able, you know having to upgrade our our tooling to take advantage of these things. They would just naturally come through the release cycle, and we as a business would be able to take advantage of those features. Um, and uh, I guess in uh, sort of lastly, um, the sort of um, support aspects of, 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 of the service, it, we're, we're moving to a different team. So it was really important that, you know, that team had only got the sort of typical JIRA Confluence administration skills. So they, they didn't have any skills around infrastructure support. So that was another key reason that we needed to move to cloud first in order to transition to another support team. And uh, the, the the sort of um, cloud uh, SaaS Jira Confluence service really, you know, gives us some real improvements around, you know, new features, um, security, performance, and 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 really the sort of availability as well, because uh, the service that we were supporting previously uh, was somewhat troublesome and and had not really been. Uh, um, had much love over the past 18 months to uh, you know to to sort of make make sure that the service was always uh, available to our, to our user community uh, so quite a, a diverse range of you know reasons for moving to the platform um, but uh, um, fundamentally this this is a step step forward really for this particular tool in uh, in DWP 
Earlier, we spoke about the team being unique. What is it about your team that's different compared to other DWP project teams? We wanted to experiment a little bit with uh, the command and control structures that, 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 that I've seen in play um, you know, up to, up to now. We wanted to see if we um, if we removed some of those things, if whether the team would step up and and take responsibility for some of those aspects. So it was a, a bit of a risk involved in this. It's kind of calculated risk, but it, but but we really wanted to to build the team dynamic and test the team the team dynamic and see if how strong that is. You know, how how does that develop? How quickly does it develop? How fully does it develop? Um, and 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 the only way to do that for as far as we could see was to was to dial dial back um the the oversight dial back the the, the micromanagement side of things and 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 just see how, how much of that we really need if we've got a strong team um and and that came together uh, pretty quickly um it was it was pretty easy to 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 do that and and the size of the team is 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 quite important in this you do, you, you can't really do this with a team of more than 12 and you can't do it with really a team of less than three or four so we, we had a good a good um, size of, of team to try this on um, and as, as the the weeks went by you could see that that uh, that the team itself was becoming self-aware and uh, and stronger over time and, and and I guess the big the big test for me as a consultant looking at this was was to ask a ask a question of the team and see how consistent the answers are from from everyone and and that certainly started to happen fairly early on um we, we were starting to see that that the um the feeling of of everyone in the team was was starting to gel uh in in terms of where where we wanted to to go how realistic our estimates were um how quickly we could get things done all these things started to 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 sort of level out so it was it was a very interesting um thing to witness to to actually watch that team uh, begin begin to build. And we've 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 carried some of these lessons into the um, other work that that we're doing um, within the department. I like to say it a lot in migrations that they are like a team sport, and no matter the experience that one has, if you train and work hard for the magnitude of a project, you will succeed. And I would say that this team has been extremely open and has built a trust for the project and for ensuring that everyone is there preparing for the success of the project. And uh, it was just a pleasure to work with the team and to see how uh, much everyone is working to ensure that this project will be successful. So how did your new approach work in practice? So our, our um, our, we, we had a, a daily stand up, which is no, no, no big uh, surprise for anyone that's been uh, doing agile uh, work. Um, daily stand-up is really kind of a check-in uh, for the team, so it's it's where you raise any concerns or or f flag any opportunities, um, and and also make sure that that other members of the team kind of know what what you're up to and and how things are going in general. Um, so so that was um, that that was kind of a good a good anchor point for for the team on a, on a daily basis, and we also had a, a weekly uh, check-in with the team. Which was kind of semi-formalized. We, we had a range of things we wanted to cover, but we we didn't we didn't follow a a, a a kind of timed agenda or anything like that. What we found was that 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 meeting tended to last less than an hour, and we we stuck to that. I think it was Tuesday afternoon. We stuck to that religiously for the whole for the whole project, um, and and that that gave us a, a good chance to kind of both reflect on on where we come where we come to uh, in the project and also. Uh, do a little bit of micro planning for for the week ahead uh, up to the next uh, checkpoint and the third thing we did was we separated our um, risks issues uh, you know assumptions work we, the, those kind of uh, analysis sessions that the teams have we separated that out into uh, a separate session which we called risk mitigation so um, so that that was particularly helpful because it it meant that we could just focus on on risk mitigation uh, and it didn't take very long. I think typically it took about 10 minutes a week to do that. And and these sessions were quite valuable because um, that they, they allowed us to to uh, to make that a bit of a team sport. Just uh, thinking back to to what Ramona said, you know, ma making these these um, activities more of a team game is is very important. And we certainly did that with our 
our treatment of uh, risks and issues and assumptions and whatnot. And we kept a good handle on those for the for the life of the project. It was good. I actually think that those uh, weekly meetings have helped a lot ensuring that everyone has alignment and that everyone knows what's the current state of the project and also what are the next steps. Because uh, my team hasn't been involved in the day-to-day -day tasks that uh, the core project team has been involved. But then uh, having that one weekly catch-up has uh, resulted in ensuring uh, that alignment. I would certainly echo echo that, Ramona. Um, I, th I think as a result of the the open way that that we wanted to run the project, so and we were we were pretty honest with Atlassian at the start about what we what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. And and to their credit, they were pretty honest with us about their expectations and also their experience of of working with customers. So it was it was a, a very healthy environment in in which to to talk about um, our successes, but also talk about some of the challenges that we faced as well. And I think that we should highlight that the, the things have been only successful all the time. There were also things when things were failing, when the team has run into specific bugs or features that were lacking from this cloud migration process. But just ensuring that we touch base on them and that we discuss open as a team and we try to find the best solution for the project moving forward that uh, actually added that uh, extra point <laughs> and i think that uh, openness was was really um the key thing about the team dynamic from my perspective um you know the the, the sort of inclusive nature uh, that everybody was included in 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 the sort of uh, meetings that we had and uh, got an opportunity to, to to speak their mind and and to work collaboratively to to get to a point where we could we could see a way forward um and uh you know we'd not we, we know we'd, we we could, we'd not overlooked anything we 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 were all confident then that we we, we could see a way forward and uh, i think that was a really key part of the team dynamic and made it an absolute pleasure to deliver this project I just want to remind ourselves that we were working in lockdown and remotely, yet that those relationships weren't harmed in any way in, in as much as you felt isolated. The, the team all brought everything uh, to each other or to a central point where we all had the opportunity to, to discuss or even just switch screens so we could work together um, on on a piece of work and get that finished and and parked it was it was a real really uh well oiled uh, mechanism that was pushing it, pushing this in i ca i can't describe how impressed i was with with the expertise with the young uh engineers that we had pushing this into into place so yeah it, the the working culture for me really really gelled in he, in in this project and i'm currently using all of those those techniques that we we developed in in the jira migration on on my new project as well so let's now talk about the migration plan and the process you developed how did it go from a standing start to being fully migrated in a matter of months across several different services with thousands of users so yeah, uh, thinking back to you know the the, the early steps that we we took, um, I think a very key thing was the early engagement with Atlassian for the migration project, that really put the project in um, a really good position to move forward, and we were able to document the the migration at high level in into the design, and then working collaboratively with Atlassian to. Uh, refine that and move forward um, um, very, you know, uh, uh, through through the key delivery stages. Um, and, and one thing I think we recognized is that, you know, we were dealing with a service that had got, you know, circa four and a half thousand users and that our migration approach needed to be absolutely bulletproof and, and tested. So, you know, Atlassian really helped us um, to achieve that. And, uh, you know that that it, it it was very critical that we we were able to get that testing done as as quickly as possible. Uh, we were working to certain timelines, and we knew that the migration would have to be over a weekend. So, you know, there were certain weekends during the the uh, that uh, the um, 
that, uh, that were kind of unavailable to us, if you know what I mean. So, 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 but, but fortunately, it landed really well uh, in terms of the timing. Um, in terms of uh, the sort of preparation work that we did for the migration, there was there was a lot of research to do. The, you know, the, the the products are very technical products, and you know, we were working in cloud for the first time. So, you know, the whole team really was on a a learning curve for the for the journey to cloud. And again, you know, Atlassian really helped us to to step up and 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 understand the things that we needed to understand for the for the migration um and um um yeah in terms of um training as well i think you know we 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 we'd also identified it, that um the users themselves needed some training so there was a big push around the sort of um what sort of knowledge was available that we could point users at and and so that the, the users themselves could get up to speed but also our, our administrators as well that needed to support the service going forward so training was also a, a key part of the migration um it went and, and and in terms of the content itself it was a very um multi-step process you know for uh, for JIRA and Confluence and uh, and also the calendars that we had as well uh, that the users actually successfully migrated themselves uh, using a process that we documented and, and tested and and, uh, and gave to them as a sort of post migration uh, step um, and and throughout you know the migration um, you know one of the key things was for us was the dress rehearsal it really was uh, that was the, the pinnacle test for us in proving that this thing worked end to end and doing all the checks and balances on the data to make sure that we hadn't lost anything, that all the users had been migrated, you know, all of the JIRA projects had migrated and all the Confluence spaces uh, had been migrated. So quite a complex migration, as you would expect, but one that, you know, we, we managed to achieve and with the support of Atlassian and 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 their sort of um, guidance and, and, you know, pretty impressive documentation at times uh, to help us achieve that was was really, um, um, you know, superb. We couldn't really have done this without the, the user community themselves. They, they had to do quite a bit of um, housekeeping and they, they had they had their own kind of mini project in, involved with this, especially the admins and project owners. They they were um, responsible for that, for the user happiness, I guess, of, of the users of of Jira and Confluence. So so they they were a little bit under pressure to get this right as well. Um, and they were uh, they were very, very helpful in, in terms of the way that they consumed the material that we that we provided. We provided a, an FAQ, which which Paul uh, kicked off at, in the early stages of the project and and grew to, um, you know, tens of questions in there with very detailed answers, uh, which which the user community responded to. They didn't they didn't keep coming to us asking the same questions. They actually took note that we had produced a, an FAQ and they went and read it and used that to to, to get things done. So in, in terms of, um, you know, economy of effort, um, we did a, a pretty good job on the project. We, we didn't waste a lot of time. Uh, but that said, uh, I would say probably 40% of the of the, the total project time we built in as contingency, partly because we the platform that we were migrating from um, had not had not been loved. Um, so we we weren't sure about uh, what the consequences of that might be during a migration, uh, and and we also had um, quite a large uh, volume of users as well. Um, we didn't want to lose any of their data, so um, you know it was um, it, it was it was interesting to uh, to to start sort of working through some of those dependencies and and, and taking the time to understand them. Uh, and and the user community were 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 really responsive to that. We we held we had a series I think of of ten um, uh, uh, webinars that Linda organised, uh, and Linda ran those with the user community. And we had lots of questions coming in, uh, and and we had the whole team ready on those um, on those webinars to answer questions on the on the team's chat, uh, and that worked really well. We, we had all kinds of questions coming in whilst Linda was presenting, and we were able to answer those in real time. So 
um, those that kind of user engagement thing that that that's something that we really wanted to push the boundary on and 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 see what you know how how good we can, can we make this how well can we do this uh, and and it was uh, it was recognised by by the user community that we had gone the extra mile to to make sure that they were fully informed about what we did and also that they had the the opportunity to engage with the whole team. So it I guess it comes back to that sort of flatter hierarchical. You know, get, getting rid of some of those hierarchies, so we didn't we didn't push people into a front door or anything like that. We just said you can just talk to the team, you know, on these on these webinars, and and they did. So it was it was good from that perspective. What have both teams learned in terms of best practice? Is there anything you would do differently? I, I can I can offer something here. Um, the, the, we talked before a little bit about um, about contingency, and we, um, and we put. Um, we put quite a bit of contingency in into the plan. Uh, what I didn't say was that that we we used uh, pretty much all of it. Um, and I, th I suppose the point the point I'm making is the is the importance of building in um, contingency into a project like this. You know, where, where there are multiple layers of unknowns, um, it's really important to. Uh, to 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 not be not be too worried about adding in more contingency, even though the start of the project it looks like it might look like it's rather a lot of time. Um, we we did use the the majority of that um, contingency, um, and and things like the the dry run that we did, you know, the run up to this to this uh, to the actual migration, it consisted of a very slow paced walkthrough of all of the migration. Um, activities that we would need to do. So we went through at a snail's pace to really understand what each step really looked like. And then we did uh, a full speed, uh, almost a full speed version of that. And then we did a full dress rehearsal where we we were essentially behaving as if that was the live migration. And we the reason we did that was to test all of our all of our um, uh, mechanisms within the project and uh, Atlassian's mechanisms and our other partners mechanisms and even uh, the user community itself. We wanted to get a, a, re a realistic feel for how those things would respond as a system uh, in, in, a, in for the migration event. That's why we did the dry, the dry run, the full dress rehearsal and Atlassian were really supportive uh, in, in helping us to, to make that happen because full dress rehearsals for that kind of thing are not typical. Um, so we we had to we had to use up a lot of our contingency to do that dress rehearsal, but we, we reached a decision pretty early on in the project that we we felt that that was necessary, and I'm so glad that we did it because uh, everyone learned such a lot from from the exercise. It gave the team a, a high level of confidence when we were heading into the the final two weeks of the project, and and that was an ambition that, that we stated very at the start of the project. We said we want to be coasting into the migration. We do not want to be panicky or nervous or anything like that. We want as a team, we want to be just strolling into that migration event uh, very confident. And that's that's exactly what happened. And I think uh, just adding to that, Sean, you know, in terms of the, the sort of contingency work that we built into the plan that, you know, during that early discovery, um, we, we'd obviously done quite a bit of work looking at the sort of key technical risks, you know, engaging with Atlassian and, you know, understanding some of the uh, sort of key dependencies that we've got as a project. So it, it gave us, you know, confidence, uh, you know, that we needed to to have this contingency in the plan moving forward and uh, and to, you know, continually review that as we went forward using um, the, the, the weekly meetings that we had. Um, so, yeah, uh, another great uh, example, I think, as a, um, as a best practice uh, around that sort of getting a good view of risk uh, early on during discovery and uh, and continually reviewing that throughout uh, the delivery process. I, I think from a personal perspective, I would have liked to have introduced a, um, a collaborative tool that they've de developed in the, the DWP Digital recently, which was called Prepare for Change, where we could have better better control of of what we're saying to the end users in the DWP so that they could confirm that they've done the checks etc that we were asking them to, to make 
it wouldn't have made a, a massive amount of difference on the day that we went live other than it would have we we had uh, upward of 200 um issues that came in that we we had to manage to onboard the the users on onto the cloud but um for me more, more use of of dwp other dwp services um would have been helpful but i came a bit too late to the to the to the project and we didn't have time to set it up but uh, that would be something i would like to to try next time if for the next migration pro process that we're going to take on i think uh, both my team and myself we've learned a lot from working with uh, this team and i will go back to playing as a team value that atlassian has how important it is not only internally to do that play as a team, but also with our customers and partners. And also going back to another Atlassian values that is one of my favorite uh, open company, no bullshit. So I think that's what we've uh, tried to do a lot with this group and uh, has uh, managed to reach the success. <laughs> and uh, and I've learned also that anything, it is possible, even though this team at the beginning, I think that for such a big project, we usually recommend also working with one of our solution partners that are experts in performing the migration. And when I initially discussed with uh, Paul and Sean, they said that they uh, decided to take this project internally and to assemble their own team. I was a bit uh, worried because it was such an important project. and. Uh, we say that for some of our customers, they perform this migration just once, and that's all for the lifetime. But uh, with all the research that the team has done and with uh, the team that they have put together, I think uh, that contributed a lot to the success. So how successful has the SaaS migration project been? The biggest re response was it was going to be an improvement in their experience for Jira. It, it was well received by by the people that I I know in the, in the department because it was such an integral part of the day everybody s sits around the Jira fire every day and just prods at it and and every, everything is is geared to working on your tickets and we talk about tickets on in our general conversation for for the for the best part of our working day so it, it it was a relief for for people to understand that it Jira is not going away, and and we're just going to take it to a better place and uh, for a better experience. Yeah, I think um, I, I, I'm just reflecting back now on 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 the week after the the live migration. So so we had the we had the, the usual very busy Monday where we're kind of just doing lots and lots of checks on on the system and and lots of phoning around teams to make sure that that everything is is as it as we we hoped it would be um but 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 i i think the thing that really struck me was was on our our, our internal tuesday tuesday call our internal team call where it was um you know it was it was a bit like tumbleweed because we we hadn't we hadn't really got very much to talk about because the migration had just gone uh, really to, very much to plan um not better than expected because we were expecting it to to go well but but it went it just went so smoothly that that there were there wasn't really anything to pick up in in that week you know, we got to that tuesday call and, and the call lasted about 10 minutes because we didn't really have an awful lot to say other than well done, we, we, you know. Well done, everybody. We've we've actually done this. You know, we've pulled this off. Um, so to to me, that that was a a great sign. You know, that the the, the team had um, had kind of um, come through on this, and it and it was really down to to that team dynamic. And thinking back to other projects and and things I've been involved in, in over the last 30, 30 odd years, the the biggest successes that I've seen have been really down to having strong team team dynamics um, and I'd, I'd never really taken the time to understand what those team dynamics were really about until until this engagement with with the department of the last few years and I've, and I've been working very hard to to try and get underneath that and understand that so this this project was a great way of of testing a lot of those um, kind of theories and insight and 
um, and a lot a lot of it's uh, a lot of it turns out to be true you know if you if you have that trust you build that trust both within the team and you build that trust with uh, with your partners and your suppliers um, especially on the supply side um, that 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 is is such a worthwhile thing to do it pays huge dividends and we forget that we've we've kind of we're, we're emerging the department is emerging from this very long period of uh, having a very complex commercial supply chain ecosystem where everything was was um, was driven by contracts and the level of trust in that supply chain was was quite thin so we're we're still kind of learning how to do that how to do this how to build that trust again um, you know, with, with supply chain on a on a one to one basis, on more of a partnering basis. So it was a great case study for us for for how to build that um, that trust as well. And just going back to to Ramona's um, comment about you know having this more more honest relationship, this no BS kind of relationship. Uh, I think that that was a really important uh, reason why this project worked because Atlassian are not that kind of of uh, of company. That they have that kind of ethos. I think that was that was uh, something that I hadn't appreciated um, until until we hit um, some some interesting uh, talking points partway through the, the the project, where we were having you know heated discussions about things, and uh, it was that trust that, that that no BS thing that really pulled through for us, that really allowed us to uh, to sort of keep our uh, belief system alive as a as a group, and believe that we could overcome those things. That that was for me that was really interesting. To see how that how that worked. Just following on from from what you said there, Sean, about uh, you know that 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 first week after we'd migrated and how quiet it was, you know, the tumbleweed. Um, you know, it, it was it was great to see that all these users um, could just get on and and about their business, you know, without any impact, and that that was. You know the goal that we wanted to achieve, and it is it's why we we set out in doing this the way way we set out to do it, uh, so so that we could achieve that. And you know, so that was a really uh, great thing. And uh, following on from that, you know, several months after the migration, now, um, you know, it's also great to see the the, the take up um, that the users have, uh, have started using that some of the new features are available. On, on the cloud SaaS solution, um, you know, to drive out more, more value for the department. Um, so that equally is also a, a, a real good plus for me that uh, we've achieved that objective as well in, in you know, enabling the, our users with with these features that they can use to to deliver better for, for DWP. I think it's also worth giving a shout out to uh, uh, Natalie and, and Elliot, our, our engineers who, who came into this project as Fairly junior engineers, um, but but left the project as uh, as, as established uh, proper full fledged engineers because of the the learning curve that they that they'd been through, and they they really showed us the way in terms of stepping up and, and not being afraid to acquire uh, new knowledge, new skills. Uh, they had to acquire a great deal of that on the fly, just on the fly, and 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 I understand um, I understand Atlassian's nervousness about us not using a a partner organization but one of one of the reasons that we wanted to, to to do it on our on our own was was that we have to build and keep building that capability uh, within the department that that technical capability we, we need to start building our confidence in, in ourselves in in terms of the technology and not not see a, a partners as a as a first resort but see them as a as, as a, a a place where we can go where where we need to but um but certainly they you know the engineers that we had were were just brilliant on the on this project they really really stepped up and just before we end what advice would you give to others if they were thinking of taking on a project like this what sort of things should people keep in mind ensuring that the community understood that we were migrating their product it was their tool that they they really like working with it. Uh, with Jira and Confluence, and there was they were very nervous about us moving it across and losing their their um, their data, etc. So early on, we we identified those features that could, they couldn't bring with them, and worked with them very closely to to try and replicate what they, it was they wanted to bring across, uh, and and try and find ways and, and put workarounds on there and. And some of the, those users that we engaged with early on ended up being 
uh, our gurus that we were going to to for them to 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 support us to get this guidance put, uh, put on so it was it was mining that that valuable resource we have which is our own people who have that that expertise in their fields that that helped me in particular get the guidance of a, um, to a quality that was able to be used across the piece so that is something i would recommend that that any new projects taken on a similar venture do engage with their community early on and not inflict the the product on them and, and, and allow them to help us to to get the the, the migration in in comfortably for them uh, yeah so I, I suppose that the, the best advice I can give is to is to focus on that team dynamic and build that strong uh, team dynamic and and um, try, try not to build uh, a team of of individuals I know it's a bit cliche but um but but there comes a point when when you're doing this where the where the team becomes self-aware it's really hard to describe this without w without having been actually through it but but I, I would I would say really focus on that on that team dynamic, uh, be as open as as possible. Um, the the other groups that that you that you involve in in the project, uh, try to uh, try to adopt them into your team if you can. Uh, we did that with uh, with the um, the the new service support team. We we involved them in quite early on in the project and and opened everything up to them. Uh, we also did that with the test and release team. who we were super helpful. Um, throughout the project, and and they really helped us to to build a lot of confidence in in what we were doing, um, and and that was because we were very open with them uh, from the start. We didn't see it as a procedural or a process thing, um, and and especially in the supply chain, we we, we also part we partnered with Clear Vision on this project. Who we've not mentioned so far, but they were uh, they were particularly helpful. Um, we engaged them more or less at the end of the project to give us a bit, a bit of a, an independent view of, of how we were set up for migration, uh, and that gave us a big confidence boost when they came back and said um, that, that the preparations looked looked pretty pretty solid, um, and they they gave us a few little uh, a few little nuggets of things to, to to help us to to put the final pieces in place, um, but the relationship with Atlassian was was really pivotal for us so I, I would I would strongly advise um, working uh, more openly with uh, with your partner organizations on your supply chain I would say that anything it is possible if you have the right support in the back end so uh, yeah just have trust that anything can be achievable with uh, hard work there uh, no I just uh, second everything that uh, Sean and Ramona said and and you know that openness that we had and and really drove that uh, dynamic in the team uh, you know to do absolutely made it an abs a pleasure to work with everybody involved and and I've got the utmost respect for everybody on the team uh, I really have and um, the only sort of thing I, I, I probably should have covered off earlier on was that you know one of the things that we did also do during the discovery work was to you know, ask the question and, you know, has it been done before, you know, with, with UK government and, and, you know, I was really pleased to, you know, the, 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 you know, we weren't the first in UK government. So uh, maybe, maybe the first at this scale in terms of the size and uh, of our migration, but, but we were able to talk to that other uh, de government department to, to understand their lessons learned and what they went through um so uh, there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of um similarities between what we did and, and what they did and and in some cases you know we we can see that we we took a slightly different approach and uh and i, and I think that really paid off when you when you look at the two different different projects so that ends our podcast for today hit the subscribe button if you want to make sure you don't miss our next episode and i'd like to thank sean ramona paul and linda for taking part today I found their migration story really interesting, and I hope you did too. So thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on the DWP Digital Podcast.